Um, now, how many nodes does this have? Zero. So how many nodes should this have? One. And how many nodes should this have? Two. Two. So let's go up and do this one first. If this is shaded, what should this be? Unshaded. And this should be? Shaded. And that would give us our two nodes. And this is symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it, it's really hard to get this to come out symmetrical. If you play with it, you'll see there's really no way to get this to come out to be symmetrical because the middle always throws it off. For example, this is not symmetrical because there's two like this and one like this. So there's kind of a desperation trick. We just leave out the middle P orbital. So this is just something you, you couldn't have figured out. You just have to have it memorized. In this particular case, we just leave out the middle P orbital because otherwise there would no, be no way to get symmetry. You just have to have that memorized. The middle node doesn't have anything, right? In the third one, in the anti bonding? Very, okay, yeah. I forgot this down here. We always have to label, we always have to shade in one of the lobes. Okay, so um, by the way, so uh, here's a trick. You have to know to just drop out the middle P orbital here because there's no other way to get symmetry. Instantly, here's the wrong way to draw this non-bonding pi molecular orbital. You have to indicate that there's space between these two. These are still the n p orbitals. These are still these n p orbitals over here. So don't just smush the two orbitals right next to each other. You need to use this line to show that this is the position that would normally be occupied by one of the p orbitals. You can't just smush these two together. That really just has to be memorized. Now we should also show where the electrons go. How many pi electrons are there in this compound? Two. So here's where the electrons would go. All right, um, so this would be the homo. And would this be the lumo? No, this would be the lumo. OK. is a radical. If this is a radical, what should the hybridization of this carbon be? SP2 still. Yeah, that's something else that you reviewed in those videos. You reviewed the rule for hybridization. Well, the rule for hybridization is that radicals are always sp2. Radicals are always sp2. So does this carbon still have a p orbital? Uh, yes. Yes. So there's still three p orbitals. It's just that now, this one is contributing an electron too, which means that this diagram is completely unchanged. Our pi molecular orbital diagram is completely the same as before because it only depends on how many p orbitals there are. And we have the same number of p orbitals as before. The only thing that changes is our electron diagram. How should I change it? Adding an electron there and then erasing lumo and doing And the homo changes too, right? Now this is the highest occupied molecular orbital, and this is the lowest unoccupied. So we have changed the number of electrons, so we change our electron diagram. But we didn't change the number of p orbitals, so we don't change the pi molecular diagram. OK. So that's how to deal with the radical. How about if this is a carb anion? When you're ready. Now that this is a carb anion, what's the hybridization of this carbon? Sp2? Sp3? Oh, 
SP3 because of the, yeah. Why did you say SP? Isn't it, if it, you have electrons and you're connected to an SP2, you're SP2? Good. Uh, now, why did you originally say SP3? Because you were using the rule for hybridization. The rule for hybridization would say, this is connected to three attached atoms and one lone pair. We're expected to just know that carbanions have a lone pair. We're expected to know that carbanions have a lone pair. Three attached atoms, the three hidden hydrogens and one lone pair, should be four hybridized orbitals. So normally, carbanions are normally sp3. The rule for hybridization says that carbanions are normally sp3. But as you noticed, this is the exception. This will not be sp3. Can you, can you explain again what, what makes the exception kick in here? It's connected to a carbon that's sp2 and has a lone pair. That's it. We need both of those things. This has both a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2 atom. Then we have the exception, which means this is sp2. So that, this was the main reason why it was important to watch that other series of videos. Here's what most people don't understand. Because in the first term of OCAM, you just learned the rule for hybridization. We never before needed the exception. So that's the thing that we have to have learned here. So I don't want to confuse, uh, I don't want to confuse the issue here. Carb anions are usually sp3. Carb anions are usually sp3. But a carb anion that's connected to an sp2 atom is sp2 because of that exception for hybridization. So this is still sp2. So it doesn't have a p orbital. Yes. Yeah, it does have a p orbital. That's why it's so important to know the hybridization. If it was sp3, would it have a p orbital? No. No. Sp3 atoms just have four sp3 orbitals and no p orbitals. So has our pi molecular orbital diagram changed? No. No. There's still three p orbitals. You would have gotten that wrong, though, if you thought this was sp3. Right? If you thought this was sp3, you would have lost one of the p orbitals. That's why it's so important now to know about that exception for hybridization. In fact, that's the whole reason for the exception. Molecules like having overlapping side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So this is following the exception so they can get an extra side-to-side -side overlapping p orbital rather than doing the normal thing of being sp3. So our pi molecular orbital diagram hasn't changed. But what about our electron diagram? It has one more electron. So now I might have gone over here also and said that this orbital is now contributing a lone pair. Now, as you saw in the video series, though, uh, if you've gotten that far, this picture is misleading. It's not like this pair is just sitting here. All four of these electrons are really spread over all three orbitals. We're just saying that this might be thought of as originally contributing the pair. But they're all four of these are really spread over all of these. Have the homo and the lumo changed then from the radical? No, this is still the homo and this is still the lumo. By the way, what do nucleophiles use? Do they use their homo or do they use their lumo? Homo. And what do electrophiles use? Lumo. Yeah, that should make sense because a nucleophile has to give somebody electrons. Well, you can't give electrons out of your lumo. So a nucleophile would use the electrons in its homo because those are the most unstable electrons. These are the least happy electrons. So a nucleophile, a nucleophile would use these electrons. And which orbital would an electrophile use? Because it wants to put the, its new electro, an electrophile is receiving electrons. Well, an electrophile wants to put the new electrons in the lowest unoccupied orbital. So an electrophile would use its lumo. Uh, 